Hello everyone, this is Yanis Papadopoulos from Beast in Black, and you're watching Mediator. You, you talked about how this uh, whole global health crisis is giving you guys more time to do the new album much faster. So are you recording anything? What's what's happening with that? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, that's true. Uh, we, we always have that thing like, um, well, Anton is basically the one composing all the songs and uh, his number one priority is always uh, the artistic value and the result and uh, of course in the past that has given us some trouble with for example deadlines because well you're, we're not working alone there is uh, labels and management and everyone relying on you and the product so to speak damn that's a lot of hair <laughs> <laughs> but um, in that sense uh, even though the, the, the current uh, crisis uh, is a very unfortunate uh, event the health crisis but we're trying to get the best of it still, and uh, at least now that most gigs or all gigs for 2020 are gone, uh, it's still a very good chance for us to actually go in the studio, take all our time, and really take even the even the sound in the CD, make a third CD with that cannot even be compared to the other two. We, as you said, take things to the next level, also in the studio department. So, I think this is a very good chance, not just for us, it's for all the musicians in the world, of course. I cannot even put my place in other bands that had to be, for example, in another continent, taking visas or whatever to make the shows happen. And uh, then suddenly they had to cancel everything, they had to transport all the equipment back home like mm, yeah. <laughs> that is uh, unimaginable really financially especially but also like you know the fans uh, getting tickets returned or reimbursed or cancelled it's but we're trying to see somehow the positive page of it and just do our best with what we're given at the current situation and well yeah and then all. unfortunately you had your you because you were had an upcoming uh, north american tour like the first one but that was canceled that was supposed to be with hammerfall that so that was kind of your big loss previously you did you you guys didn't plan on doing any live streams on taking any part of in in that kind of case in in this not really i mean i at least from my personal standpoint uh, i wouldn't do such a thing and uh, from my experience with the rest of the bandmates, I think they're standing where I am, and uh, we're just uh, we just want to do the real thing, and that's all. We just uh, look forward to playing again in front of a real crowd. I mean, sure, you are still a real real crowd if you're watching from the couch, though. You know, it's not the same, and we don't ever want to compromise that. At least, I wouldn't. And well. No such proposal has come from within the band or the label, so I guess it's the same for everyone. They stand where I stand, so I don't think so. We wouldn't do that, but uh, as you said, maybe the biggest loss for this year, of course, we've only been to America once, and that was in, uh, in Canada, in Montreal last summer, in the Heavy Montreal Festival. But other, other than that, it would be a very good haul opening for the band but optimistically speaking at least I would hope that the tour would be rescheduled maybe for 2021 there's not official news as far as I know you know yeah and maybe you can take new songs on the on the road there <laughs> even better even better that, that I wouldn't I wouldn't have any complaint about that yeah that, yeah so it might, that be, would a, be, so it might be a plus even of course of course it's only about like getting that uh, that circle completed in the sense that you play in a certain league or level, you have an album, and let's say you do support tours. So in the next one, you play the same places, for example, headlining them, and then you get maybe a bigger support tour 
with that album. And then with the third one, you want to, again, for example, headline the previously supported places and so on and so forth. So for 2020, at least, that circle has been to a halt. We, we didn't really get the chance to do that because well, all the shows are gone. So we're missing that kind of, everybody, not just us, of course. Every band is missing the opportunity to expose themselves in front of a real crowd and, you know, uh, expand their audiences. So, but hey, it is what it is. And uh, like, there's not really much to be done except for just take the precautions, follow the <laughs> instructions to stay safe and hope that this whole thing gets eliminated in the next couple of months, ideally. Mm. And let's see, let's see what the future holds about that uh, crisis regard, at least. And uh, then you played a few so shows in Russia, but is that something you would like to take your own like headline show to as well? <sighs> well, concerning Russia specifically, I would say that uh, we were supposed to have a few shows in last May, like a month ago. With Nightwish? With Nightwish, exactly. But those were also um, postponed, but they're officially postponed with a specific date, maybe even the exact same dates or something like that. I'm not, I'm not very good with semantics or specifics. But those shows are at least are postponed for Russia for 2021. And that's official already. Uh, but other than that, I am not entirely sure uh, if we would have uh, the proper dynamic to do our own headline shows there yet. But that's what the, as I forementioned, uh, that's what the sport shows are for. So we would hope that, of course, those would give some extra exposure and push for the band so we can return. And that that applies to every country, especially to countries that uh, we haven't really explored that much before. Or we only had two headline shows in Russia before, in St. Petersburg and uh, Moscow, also last year. Uh, but that there's so many great crowds, really, that you can. And that was a pleasure to play in front of. That was such a new experience as well. Russia, and then you have Japan, for example. But yeah, playing, especially like new continents, like we would love playing in America, we would love playing in Australia. That has never happened for us at all before, you know. Playing in Africa. Of course. Well, not. how about, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're from Greece, so... Uh, you haven't played with Beast in Black to a Greek audience, have you? Sadly, no. Sadly, no. The closest. Well, when is when's that gonna happen? That's... <laughs> that, that's a good question. The closest we've been to that was in a show. I think it was in Czech Republic or Slovakia. I'm not sure. And there was a small Greek fan club. We were playing with Mirath, and they were like, I think. I'm not sure if they were in the Mirath fan club or not, but uh, they were there creating so much noise, like the crowd, and they kind of influenced everyone around the crowd. Because the thing is that when Greeks actually attend metal shows, they go, they go berserk. Like maybe their numbers are not so big, for example, as Finnish numbers. But when they do that, it's like they've never been to a, <laughs> to a metal show before, so they really <laughs> give it all. It's crazy. And uh, they really made a, a chaos in that gig. Did you but, go talk uh, to them? Yeah, yeah. Well, they, 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 went, they came to us and they were like, yeah, yeah, great band. Uh, and uh, stuff like that. I, like, I remember Mirith was playing and they were jumping up and down. I was like, I'm sure these guys are Greeks. And, <laughs> and then, like, because I could see from their faces, you know. And then I see a Greek flank standing up. <laughs> like they were some, yeah, some specific fa fan club. And I was like, yep, yeah, I was correct. I was correct. Fan club like for Mirath or for so. Beast in Black? Yeah, oh. I think so. Oh, okay. I think so. Yeah, it was the when we were headlining the tour. 
in the mirror where, where the opening act. But that's the closest we've come to playing in front of a Greek audience. But uh, at least when I was talking to Mate about the band's plans, he, his intentions were also about playing in, in most countries that we haven't played playing after releasing the third album. So, I don't know, wishful thinking, but I would also agree with those plans. It would be great to expand the audiences and to, and to discover undiscovered land, so to speak. But yeah, well, I, I think it would be super uh, funny if you took the band to Greece and maybe there's someone who doesn't know that you're Greek in the audience. Oh, then that... you, you, could, you could give the, give the speech in, in that, Greek. That would be... I don't know how we can do this, but I really want to... Uh, because I'm having a lot of thoughts. You know, when I'm just uh, lying down and thinking about life or whatever. I've had a lot of scenarios about what would happen when we play to Greece. And I would really want to say stuff to the audience without my guys understanding <laughs> what the hell I'm talking about. And I would really want to, like, give inside info about the <laughs> the bandmates. And <laughs> the audience would be laughing and the guys would be like... What is this guy talking about? And then I, I will tell them something completely else than what I said to the audience. You know, like prank them like that. Like, but I really want to do that. And I'm pretty sure that not, maybe some Greeks know Beast in Black already, but I'm not sure if every one of them knows that I'm Greek. And well, of course, it makes sense. Like, nobody knows the members just because they know the band. You know, I know so many bands, but I don't know where they come from, if they're from. America, if they're from the UK, if, or what city they're from, you know? Well, yeah, especially because yeah. Beast in Black is labeled as a Finnish band, yeah, so exactly. uh, so you wouldn't just guess that... that uh, yeah, you have to d kind of dig in deeper or find it from yeah. other talks. So it could whatever. be a ni nice surprise for some... I, I want to hope so. I would, I would love that element of surprise indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but well, for the Greek viewers, maybe now the surprise is spoiled. <laughs> yes, yes. No, but no, but nah. uh, you've you've said many times that, uh, well, at least to me, that the music culture in Greece it's much different than in in Finland. It's like totally like. The in a way, uh, like um, h how to put it? Like, um, let's say that you have the mainstream pop Greek music and. Uh, that really like i mean the clubs and the bars mainly consist of that that they really put all their bets on that it's as almost as if there is no other genres in music and i'm not even talking about heavy metal like doing heavy metal myself when i have free time at home i don't listen to much, as much heavy metal so it's not about that uh, if you ask me but it's about you know there's so much music rather than just that and i don't hear it playing anywhere you know you would really have to go to a specific targeted bar that plays i don't know funk jazz blues i don't know it's re those are really hard to come by it's like yeah we have enough of these places so and that also um expands to the audience you know to the listeners like most people are still kind of have the misconception that, uh, you know, heavy metal is like, oh yeah, it's that oh, 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 thing, and uh, yeah, I cannot listen to that. Most of the time, if you tell somebody that you're a heavy metal singer, if they're not metalheads, that would be their reaction, that they would still be like kind of skeptic and defensive about it, like, so yeah, in that sense, yeah, the culture is quite different. I mean, here, it's heavy metal in Finland is kind of imbued. It's kind of like absorbed by the crowd. I mean, sure, somebody might not listen to metal, but it's normal if you tell them that you listen to metal yourself. It's not like, oh, you know, nobody freaks out if you tell them or like nobody will react fondly, you know, most well, of the time. How, how, did, how did you get into heavy metal living in, in Greece? Well, I guess I was in a lucky spot, I mean, because uh, I think metal might be one of the fewest musics that 
can really revolutionize for you what music can really be. And it's not like it's standing higher above any other genre because, of course, there is music's more complicated and uh, more sophisticated, so to speak. So it's not about that. But in that sense, that I got exposed to more kinds of music than what I already knew. I was lucky because I had my sister who was already listening to metal. And also myself at the beginning, I was like, what are you listening to? Like, why? Like, uh, uh, because it's always the fear of the unknown, you know, especially when you're younger. I don't know. And I were, I was seeing her have so many heavy metal posters, you know, it was Iron Maiden, it was him, it was Nightwish, I think. Funny, two of the, those three bands are already finished. But yeah, yeah, that's funny. But she had those posters. I was like, what is happening? You know, but I, I, I was the wrong one, you know. And then little by little, uh, I was listening to that more. And I was kind of interested, you know. I was like, what are you listening to? And then she started showing me and playing me more stuff. She also had some cassettes with Ice Earth, uh, Bruce Dickinson, you know. Back then, the cassettes just had random songs. Like, because they were just uh, traded off with people, you know? One person gives it to the another, another, and then they make some compilation or something. So there were no coherent albums. They were just the uh, random songs. So I remember it was, she had the prophecy from Ice Earth in that cassette and Road to Hell by Bruce Dickinson. I, I can't forget that cassette. Hello, Oscar. So the thing is that um, I started getting by that. I started listening uh, to heavy metal more from that point on. And then, of course, you know, the rest is history. Once you start liking it, then it kind of, it kind of becomes your identity, even. <laughs> like, it, I don't know. Like some people say it's a phase. I don't believe in phases. Sure, maybe you find out other things in the future, but there's always a part of you that's a metal head. Hello, Oscar. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's how it started. That's yeah. how it started. So, both me and my sister were a real minor minority or even exceptions in our high school, so to speak. She didn't have any other classmate that listened to heavy metal, and I only had one friend that listened to Linkin Park, kind of the newer wave, uh, Misfits. Uh, Lacuna Coil, I remember, he was very into that. So at that point we started exchanging our tastes and, uh, yeah, music likings. But uh, other than that, uh, maybe a couple of friends would listen to a few of these songs, but mainly nobody was really like a metalhead back then in our high school. Like So, yeah, it is kind of challenging to try to you know, stick to what you really want and uh, believe in, no matter if it's music or anything else, because you will, will not really belong, because nobody else is into that. So you have to kind of accept that, yeah, you're going to be the only one. And many, it's understandable, like, many people will kind of give that up. They will be like, no, I'd rather be with people and belong rather than just be alone and, you know, being alone in, alone in this. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we... But it wasn't bad anyway. Like, at least nobody was judgmental or, like, uh, critical about it. Yeah. They were, everybody, at least everyone was sticking to their own guns. So it was kind of respectful in, their, in its own way. So, yeah. And, so and it has been fine. And so, so, somehow uh, uh, you always hear that people who listen to heavy metal, they find, like, real comfort in the music. Absolutely. So it's, like, it's really meaningful to them and sticks with them their whole life. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's a way of life, if you ask me. And uh, <laughs> that's what it always symbolized, you know, as a music. Even from the beginning, it was always rebellious. Yeah, yeah. Well, did you find any... Any like uh, role models that you still have to this day from from metal? Well, if you're talking about role models, I think every metal head, at least every lead singer in metal, should have Bruce Dickinson as their role model. And I'm not just talking about 
musically because of course that that's a given but uh, that person has been a genius for his whole life you know he, he has been a pilot he has been a, a, a businessman he has been a, an historian like <laughs> and he's not it's not like he just did those things as a side activity he's really nailed those points and he's always striving uh, for perfection or he's always striving for improvement and even till this day he's showing everyone how things are really done how to be on stage how to react with the crowd how to sing long hours without losing your voice that guy's unbelievable really and uh, yeah if you strive to be a metal lead singer and uh, don't take that guy into account for me you're kind of going probably you're going the wrong way like at least that's my opinion and usually i'm not so absolute about my opinions but that's how it is yeah yeah it's like a standpoint yeah well would you uh uh what you do uh if you uh suddenly wanted to do music uh, on your own like your own songs would you do metal or something something else you have no. in mind nowadays i've both given it a lot of thought but then again i haven't wrapped my mind around it like i really don't know i really don't know because inspiration really comes into so many different forms and uh for me it comes in every kind of direction and at the same time i'm i'm not giving it enough enough attention like it's it's some kind of fear because i haven't really composed my own songs so far and uh, it's not like there is not ideas because there's plenty but most of the time i'm not uh, giving them their attention i should or i'm not uh, really believing them en enough to try to develop them but it's the same kind of fear as some person my age, for example, would suddenly uh, decide uh, that they would start singing. And that would be frightening because you've never done that in your life and then you suddenly decided to do it. So you have to start from scratch. And when you're an experienced musician, so to speak, and then again, there is a part of you that is totally inexperienced and it's still a musical part. That gets frightening. That kind of challenges your, you know, your musical being in itself. You know, you're like, I am this musician, so why am I a beginner in this? And that beginning phase is, it can be frightening, but we all got to start from somewhere and maybe... Yeah, maybe that's some good food for thought for for anyone and for me as well to try to bypass those fears and overcome them. Yeah, because it seems uh, many metal musicians, they might have a side project where they do something completely else. Kind of like uh, make the inspiration go like they have. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, like a creational outlet. Yeah. So yeah. to speak. Yeah, that's. And I think uh, that's something that is more than respectable when we're talking about uh, somebody who mainly per performs. Of course, there's a lot of input in what I do in Beast in Black, and uh, there's even a lot of ideas. But it's always like a different situation when you create the music, when you create the lyrics. Like. You're the father of them, literally. It's a totally different thing. And it's not comparable. It's not better, it's not worse. It's a totally other feeling and it's a totally other side. You get a totally different pleasure from that. So, yeah, that is something that I would definitely be interested in uh, discovering. Maybe in the future, maybe in the future. Well, Yanis, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure in mine. What are we going to talk about? Oscar! <laughs> well, let's just have him here as well. It can be even... He's not barking anymore. So. Oh, yeah.
<laughs> we'll do it again if it's shit. No, we will not. <laughs> I will not do this again. <laughs> Can you pass me one chewing gum from up there? Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay. Just let him, just let him make a lot. Oh, he smells a lot. <laughs>